this video we're going to take a look at the paint operator. Paint is used when we want to have particles paint an object out in the scene and it can paint them either with a solid color or apply a procedural texture map or even use a bitmap. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. We'll create a couple rules. We'll create the first rule out here is going to be born and in born we're going to go ahead and use a matter waves to born some particles off this plane. We'll go ahead and change that speed to 50 and we're going to vary the uh, UV emission a little bit. In this next dynamic set, we're going to go ahead and name this paint. And in paint, we're going to go ahead and use the all particle group to paint an object. We're going to get the material paint operator. And paint needs that group to know which particles are going to be painting the object. Uh, the first parameter that we have for paint is pick object. This tells us uh, which object it is those particles are going to paint. In this case, we're going to paint the sphere, but it's also worth noting that here on Master Dynamic, you could enable groups as objects. And if you had multiple groups over here, remember that groups as objects uh, takes each particle group and turns them into a max node that you can access and modify. So you could actually pick um, one of these particle groups, maybe like all there. Anyway, we're going to hold off on that, but that is an option. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the paint parameters. Uh, the most important thing about paint is that it requires a TP text map. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at the material that's applied to this object right now. It is a, an FR advanced material. Uh, we're using Final Render. And it's an extremely powerful and fast render. I highly recommend it. Uh, especially since it has the new uh, Final Render instancing ability here in TP3. This is incredibly powerful and saves it a huge amount of memory when you've got a lot of particles out there. Uh, anyway, let's take a look at that material. It's an FR Advanced and it has no map slots. It's basically just a solid color. Um, but in order for paint to work, we have to assign a, a TP text map to him. So we're going to go ahead and assign a TP text map to his diffuse slot. And we'll come down here to the TP text map. It's right there. And now you can see it kind of has two sections. It's got a mono output. And this is going to kind of control the alpha channel or um, dark or light areas of the texture maps that we're going to add. And we're going to add a bunch of texture maps over here. Uh, it's not required, though. And so we're f at first, we're going to leave this empty. And we're going to see how we can just use a plain old solid color. But we have to remember that paint does require the TP text map uh, to be on that uh, source object material somewhere. Uh, so what we're going to do is we've got it assigned to the diffuse slot. We're going to go ahead and we have to drag that TP text map into this TP text map slot. And we'll go ahead and say instance. Um, you could probably also uh, use the picker dialog this way to pick it, but we're going to go ahead and just drag it. It's nice and easy. I'll go ahead and hide that, and we'll just leave all the rest of these settings as default, except for the color down at the bottom. And we'll go ahead and set that to red. You remember that since we did not assign any texture maps to apply to paint with, uh, what it's going to do is it's just going to go ahead and use that color. So we'll go ahead and scrub, and we'll go ahead and render, and we can see a bunch of little red dots appearing on that surface. They're really small, though. That's the thing. The paint operator has a whole bunch of parameters that are going to control how uh, how these dots behave, their scale, um, their fade on time, scaling time, um, and when we get into the procedural texture maps, how that texture map is applied to the surface. So we'll just go through these one by one. Uh, first step we've got scale. Scale, you saw how small those were. Let's go ahead and set it to 10 and see what we get. You can get quite a bit larger. Um, scale has some controls to it. It's got a scale time where you can actually tell the paint operator um, over how much time should it scale up or scale down that mapping. Uh, the way that's controlled is with this gradient here. Uh, what this does is it uses a uh, either grayscale value like this to say, okay, I want you to start small and grow to be large up to this value, 10. Uh, if we reverse this, uh, we could say, we'll go ahead and flip that and that. And what we get now is I want to scale from my maximum value, 10, down to a minimum value of 0. 
and so that scaling is going to occur over 10 frames. We'll go ahead and make sure that we get some pen, some particles painting here, and what we'll do is just step through this, and we'll see that these uh, paint markings are scaling down. Okay, so pretty straightforward there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and flip this back around because we actually want, uh, at the end, we want them to be fully uh, fully sized like that. And we'll just remove that scale time, set it to zero, so that as soon as they hit, uh, they start off at full size. If we had left that scale time gradient, if we had set this uh, to white and this to black, what would happen is it ends up not appearing uh, because it uses the far right value here. Okay, so that's why we set it uh, the way we did. We'll just go ahead and reset that. Uh, paint is kind of a tricky one. There's there's a lot of things that can go wrong where you end up wondering, well, where's my paint markings? Um, so just kind of we'll try to hit on all of them and definitely check the help file. Okay, next up is the blend time. Blend time is going to affect the opacity, kind of a, a fade in or fade out value uh, for these markings. Uh, you can see we can specify a number of frames to blend over and it has the same kind of gradient control where it says uh, white's going to be 100%, black will be 0%, and it says, okay, as soon as that particle hits, I want to start off at 100%, and then over the course of 10 frames, I want to fade out. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and do a quick preview, see some of this happening. We'll step by two frames at a time. And you can see those two guys fading out there. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, so we'll set blend time back to zero, and then we'll take a look at remove time. Remove time, uh, right now it's set to zero, which means that those particle mar markings are always going to be on there. Uh, if we want to specify, maybe have it only appear for four frames, we'll set that to four. So even after four frames, no matter how long they're scaling or, s or blending, um, after four frames they're going to go ahead and be removed. Okay, but we'll go ahead and that's a pretty easy one. Uh, next up is the mapping source. This is really uh, getting into the good stuff of paint. Uh, we're going to go ahead and open up the material editor and we've got a bunch of materials already pre-defined uh, out here. These are all nice because they actually all have a, an output uh, rollout where we can tell this this map use your uh, RGB intensity as an alpha. Uh, it's kind of an extra way, an extra control that we'll see here in a little bit. Uh, anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to come back to our main material that's on our target object, and we are going to go ahead and add a texture map now. We're going to go ahead and add from the material editor. We've got all those guys there. Let's see their preview. Let's go ahead and use that gradient ramp with the noise on it, an instance of him. And now let's go ahead and double click, and we get all the same controls that we had before. You can see it starts off black in the middle and then just kind of makes a ring. It's got some noise, and it's going to... For now, we're going to go ahead and turn off this alpha from RGB intensity. And let's go ahead and look here. This mono output, this is actually going to reference, um, it's going to reference this output settings here, but we're going to see how that plays in a second. 